Today on Dr. Phil, are little girls growing up too fast? You said that you would let Taylor get Botox. I'm open-minded to a lot of things. Allison's parents don't like the way she dresses. My mom said it looks trashy. I'm trying to protect her. If she won't listen to them. That makeup and those clothes are sexually provocative. Will she listen to Dr. Phil? Should we not give her any makeup at all? If she abuses it, absolutely you should not give her any makeup. This is going to be a changing day in your life. Have a good show, everybody. Here we go. If it matters to you, that's what I want to talk about. Are you ready to move? Take Let's do it. Well, now, I raised boys instead of girls, but this is what they call a vanity. This is found in many little girls' rooms across America. I'm looking all right today. <laughs> Years ago, you would find things like, you know, stuffed animals, perfume bottles, candy jewelry, not jewelry, but candy jewelry on something like this. But boy, have things really changed. Today's generations of little girls, in my view, have grown up really fast, and they're using grown-up makeup, fingernail polish, and it's gotten to the point where some tweens are even demanding Botox and Juvederm. Yeah, tweens, I'm talking like 10, 11, 12. So the question we're asking today is, have these tweens crossed the line between what is cute to what is racy? Now, my first set of parents, Katie and Troy, would say yes. I have a daughter named Allison who's 13 years old. When Allison entered the sixth grade and her body started changing, a lot of boys started paying attention to her. She began wearing inappropriate amounts of makeup for a girl her age. It portrays this image that I'm much older. It's going to get her the wrong kind of attention. My mom says to me, it looks trashy, it looks slutty. Allison and I have arguments almost on a daily basis about what Allison is wearing. That he's either too tight or too revealing. You're already dressed. I don't want to go get dressed again. It just looks like you're trying a little hard, girlfriend. It's not my fault that I look so grown up in my clothes because I have a more grown up figure than most girls my age. Allison is addicted to attention from boys. I'm not obsessed with boys. Like, I don't just go for every guy I see that I think is hot. It's kind of sad looking back on the pictures of Allison. She just looked cute, and she looked fresh, like the way a girl of her age should look. I do try to look older than I am. I want to look more mature, because in elementary school, other little girls call me really ugly. So now it's like, if I don't look pretty, then I freak out. Recently, my cell phone rang, and it was this school counselor wanting to let me know that another teacher had seen Allison engaging in an extended kiss and hug with a boy. One morning before school, we found a condom in her bag. A friend of mine dropped it in my backpack, and I didn't know what to do with it. The first thing you think is, is she having sex? Just because I have a boyfriend doesn't mean we're doing that. If things don't change with Allison, she will wind up pregnant. What scares me the most is the image she portrays to boys. I'm available, I'm easy, I'm hot. I want my parents to trust me more and trust that I'm not doing anything. Just because of the way I look doesn't mean I'm doing stuff. Okay, um, how do you feel about being here? What's your goal today? Prove to my mom that she can trust me. Okay, what do you hope happens today? I just hope that we can make a breakthrough with Allison and get her to understand that the image that she is putting out there could put her in a dangerous situation in the future. And we want her to understand the role that her actions play, yeah. you know, in some of the circumstances that she gets into, especially with other girls. Gotcha. And now, Dad, you agree with what Mom says here? Yeah, I do, but just be a kid. That's all we want. What's your fashion goal? Are you wanting to be hot? No, I don't want to be what hot, I... exactly. <laughs> I just want to wear clothes that make my figure look more... Hot. No, hot. not hot. <laughs> okay, who are, you, who are you trying to appeal to with your clothes and, and your look? You want boys to think you're cute? Yeah, boys and... Also, there's girls that are mean to me, so I want to appeal that, like, sometimes oh, well, I feel like... Oh, well, the cuter you are, the meaner they'll get. That's not yeah. the problem. <laughs> As you become a threat and relevant, that's when they get exactly. tacky and, and yes. pick at you. The more you're playing into this and you're dulling yourself up, the more you're kind of bringing this drama and inviting it. Okay. Is there a line that goes too far, and if so, what is it? Where, is there something you wouldn't wear? 
because yeah, it's too racy. Wear. Like what? Like, for example, like booty shorts and a belt, like a shirt that shows my stomach. Okay. I would never wear that. So you like. wouldn't do bare midriff and little shorty shorts? No, you've tried. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> With high heels, you wouldn't do that. What, what would you call these? Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> that's for a hot summer day. I want to make a switch here. Can I put you down where your dad is for a minute and ask your dad yeah. to come up here? You're going to be glad of this in a minute, right. I promise you. Okay. How you hey, doing? Good to meet you. That was pretty agile. Yeah, she did. Okay. Um, who's running the show in this house? <laughs> no, we both are. No, no. We're both running the you show. You say you and no. you say her. Yeah. No, we're both running okay. the show. Okay. How much money does she make a year? She have a career? Zero. Zero. <laughs> Allison doesn't make any money. Okay, no. so she makes no money because no. she's 13. Exactly. Right. Okay, so who buys the makeup? Mommy and Daddy buy the makeup. <laughs> who buys the clothes? Mommy and Daddy buy the clothes. Who provides the housing? Mommy and Daddy do. Who puts her in the car and takes her to school and makes... Mom and Dad. Daddy takes all her to that. school, Mommy brings her home. Okay, <laughs> so what am I missing here? You say, I don't like what she's wearing, but you buy it. You don't like what she puts on her face, but you buy it. Right. You take her to school, so you know what she's wearing. If she's got a book bag and putting other clothes in it, then we just don't have a book bag anymore. Exactly. I mean, we've got to get back to common sense here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but Dr. Phil, she, she has the makeup, but it's how much she puts on at a time. Well, I... then, but if you abuse that, then you don't have makeup. Should we not give her any makeup at all? If she abuses it, Absolutely, you should not give her any makeup at all. We should talk about what happens. Yeah. Yeah. What happens yeah. You know, we want to take away her makeup. And she just goes into a knockdown, drag down, you know, Fight. this and fighting. And, and it's, it's hard for us. I, I know that by throwing a fit and screaming bloody murder and, you know, like somebody's physically attacking her. But how okay. do we diffuse the situation and not buy into it? What you're getting is what I call a tall tantrum. Okay. Yeah. This is the same behavior you get when they're one or two. She's just taller. Yeah. <laughs> this is a tall tantrum. She's just throwing a tantrum in the morning because she doesn't get what she wants. So what do you do? Well, we can't have her going to school all upset. Right. So we give in. Yeah. Or, or he'll say, I'm I not going to... I can't go to work upset. She can't continue the day upset. That's also part of it, too, not having her upset. I, I can't spend my day upset. She can't spend her day upset. We've got to. Well, we'll we've got get to you some it. more milk so you can go to. <laughs> but what happened in the morning? You, you can't go to work upset because your daughter was upset. I, I got to start the day fresh, Doctor Phil. And no, yeah, you got to raise your daughter. I understand. I wrote down some of the specific things you said. You hate your daughter's clothes, but you don't know who buys them. I don't. Can I know what happens? Okay, typically. excuse me. Hang oh, on. Oh, sorry doesn't notice when daughter comes home in different clothes. She goes to school in A and comes home in B, and you miss that? I do, Dr. Phil. I... Okay. He's not home. Doesn't have the energy. You say you just don't have the energy to deal with it. I would like to think that I have the energy to deal with it, but I have... Well, that, th I this... have to be a husband to her. I've got three other kids. I've got... But this is in quotes. I don't have the energy to deal with it. And you also said that you don't know your daughter's friends or what they're like. No, we don't. She's never brought him over. We've told her, you know, that we want her to bring, you know, people home. I mean, we do know the kids well, that are her youth group. We do know the kids that are on her softball team. But outside of school, she's not allowed to go do other things unsupervised at all. Okay, well, you don't dispute anything that I just read. No, Dr. No, he doesn't. doesn't. Okay, no. this... That's part of the major problem. This is going to be a changing day in your life. <laughs> well, good. Yeah. Okay, we're going to take a break. Now, Katie is afraid that Allison's promiscuous image is going to get her the wrong type of attention. She's right. We'll talk about that in a minute. There's a girl, her ex-boyfriend liked me, and I got pushed onto his lap, and everyone thought I was giving him a lap dance, and I wasn't. She's not making the connection between the image she's portraying and the way these girls are reacting to her. Last year, I got into trouble with a guy. I'm talking about, like, doing sexual things. You can put on something that's more age-appropriate. This is age-appropriate. 
dressing herself up and carrying herself the way she does, we're afraid that she may be attacked or, or worse. I can't help it if I have boobs and a butt and curves. It's not my fault. I'm never gonna get myself into that situation again because I know that I'm not supposed to lead a guy on. Allison definitely thinks that she can handle anything, that she'll just kick him in the and it'll all be over. She's just not being realistic. Well, Katie and Troy are worried about their tween daughter's racy image. Now, sometimes that crosses from image into behavior. They say Allison has even been accused of giving a boy a lap dance at school. Take a look. My parents think that I'm promiscuous. She puffs her chest out. She pops her booty out. She loves to talk about how great her booty is. One time I was checking one of Allison's social networking sites and noticed her username was junglefever69. I thought she didn't even realize what 69 was. And I was pretty horrified. When I confronted Allison about this, she of course thought it was no big deal and that I was overreacting. Girls at my school have used some pretty mean words to me, like they've called me a whore or a slut or a skank. They call me that because there's a girl, her ex-boyfriend likes me, and I got pushed onto his lap, and everyone thought I was giving him a lap dance, and I wasn't. My reaction to all of that was, here we go again, which was obviously really, really upsetting that once again she was portraying that image. She's not making the connection between the image she's portraying and the way these girls are reacting to her. You said she just doesn't make the connection. Guys, come on. We, we have a, a generation of entitled children. Absolutely. Kids that yes, just kind do. of assume they watch television, they read magazines, they see billboards, they decide, I want to be that. I want that look, I want those clothes, I want those those brands, I want that image, I want that perception. And because we have this mindset as parents that we want our kids to be happy and have the things that make them happy, but the problem is she doesn't know the consequences of her choices. That's the reason that society has worked it out where kids don't go out on their own until much later in life. That's why you're saying, why doesn't she get it? She doesn't get it because she can't see it. And that's why parents have authority. You have to get actively involved. You say you don't have the time or the energy because you got a career and three other kids, and you're saying, come on, I'm just being realistic, right? I'm tired too, Dr. Phil. Yeah, okay. This is, it's been a two year battle, and I'm at. Oh, it's just beginning. And, and well, I'm afraid. No, that, she's still going. No, but, no, she's still going at And it. that's what I'm so afraid is that he's just, he's, he's you, giving you, up on her, oh, and listen. he's saying, oh, we only have four more years to keep our head above the water, and I am more, I want to get in there, and I want to fight, and I want to give, give consequences, and I want to. If you don't get actively involved, you think you're tired now, <sighs> you're going to get really tired in the future because this is going to get exponentially worse, not better. Look, I think as parents, you have to pick your battles. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, you know, you, you have to pick your battles. And I've had so many people tell me about, about Allison's makeup, you know, pick your battles, honey, if that's <clears> the <throat> only thing that she wants to do. But still, I'm trying to protect her. So there's a difference between style and, and provocative. Exactly. You have to decide when, when something is style or fashion. Okay. Or if it is sending a message that is sexually provocative. Okay. And that makeup and those clothings are sexually provocative. Exactly. That's a battle you want to pick. Now, you said something that was very, very important at the very top. And I, I asked you what you hoped would happen today. You said, I want my parents to trust me. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, the reason I ask you that is because I believe if you want results that you have to appeal to children's greed. Right. Because yes. kids are greedy. Oh, yeah. they, they're, they're into immediate gratification. They want what they want when they want it, and they want it right now. And so you have to appeal to her greed. She, she wants you to trust her. Do you know what emotional integrity means? Nope. <clears> okay, <throat> I didn't think you did. See, emotional integrity is when you make a commitment to somebody in a relationship that you're going to either do something or not do something, and you keep that commitment. You know, it's like if you tell your parents, I'm going to my girlfriend's house to spend the night, Trust me. And if they come and check, and sure enough, you're there, then that engenders trust. They go, wow, she did what she said she was going to do. And if you say, trust me, I'm going to my girlfriend's house to spend the night, and you don't go, or you get over there, they, they show up, and there's seven boys over there, then they go, wait a minute, 
You didn't show integrity here. That was not emotional integrity. You told me something and you didn't do it. If you want trust, then you need to teach them to trust you, okay? Okay. And one of the things that, that you guys have to do is decide that you're the parents and you're gonna make the decisions. If you think that she's crossing the line with her clothing or, or her makeup, then you, you have to decide, we're not gonna do that. And if you wanna throw a tantrum, you think you look bad with makeup, wait till you show up at school with your eyes all swollen and snot hanging out of your nose, because <laughs> yeah. that's what's gonna happen, because you're right. going. If I have to carry you in there like wood, <laughs> firewood, you're going. This Excellent. is commando parenting. Now you can decide, and I'll promise you, you can negotiate for a lot more than you can cheat and steal. But I'm gonna promise you, if you were my daughter, and I told you don't wear something to school, and you snuck it to school and changed once you got there, and I found out about it, you wouldn't believe what would happen next. You would be in overalls with a turtleneck for a year. <laughs> you have no idea what would happen because I can play as tough as you can play. And that's exactly what needs to happen here. So you need to negotiate because you can't see what's gonna happen. Because they say, if you dress provocatively, boys are gonna give you attention. Yeah. And if they give you attention, you're gonna like that. And then you're gonna get in a situation where you make a bad choice and before you know it, oops, something bad happened. They know that, you don't. And until you get burned, until you get caught, you, you won't know that because you can't see around corners. You, you follow me? Yeah. Okay, a little experiment when we come back. Well, I'm here with Katie and Troy. They have a beautiful young daughter, Allison, who is 13. You're in what grade? Eighth grade. Eighth grade. And you, you like looking nice, right? Yeah. Now, I was talking to you earlier about whether or not you understood what I meant when I said you can't predict the consequences of your actions. Yeah, I understood. Okay, come up here. Are you, are you game for a little experiment? Sure. Okay. <laughs> All right. I want you to stand right here. Okay, I want you to look down here. You see there's, there's like a runway down here? Yeah. Okay. And then there's another runway there. Take that walk, would you? And see, there's a corner coming up, and you can see it. So you turn that corner. Okay, now here's another corner. You can see it, so you turn that corner. Oh, step, oh, step, oh, step, 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 step. And you're right back. See, it's easy when you can see. Yeah. Come here. <laughs> Okay, now see, I say kids can't see around corners. All right? Okay. Now can you see? No. This time we're gonna turn left. Okay. So I'm going that way? Oh. <laughs> oh. You almost went into the ditch. Oh. If I fall into a ditch, what's gonna happen? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> now this yeah. is You can't see now. See, it's a little harder when you can't see where you're going. You don't know where the corners are. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, sorry. No, that's okay. All right, stop right here. Take it off. <sighs> you're supposed to be up there. Oh. Oh. Wow. Okay. So come back up here. You can have my chair. Uh, now, what was the difference between the time that you could see and the time <laughs> that you really couldn't see? I went the wrong way when I couldn't see. You went the wrong way when you couldn't see. Yep. And what I'm telling you now is the choices you're making about the clothes you wear, the makeup you wear, the image you project, you can't see where that's heading you any more than you can see where to turn when you have this blindfold on. She can see it, he can see it. You gotta be smart enough to know that while it makes sense in the moment, this woman who loves you more than any person on the face of this earth wants you to be happier would celebrate and dance at your successes. Absolutely. More than any woman in the world. 
And this man, more than any man in the world, they recognize that the choices you're making right now might be creating an image you don't want, might be putting you in a danger zone where you don't want to be. And instead of fighting them in your wisdom, because at 13 you know everything, and they know very little, but at this point you might say, you know what, I got a lot of time to grow up. And do you think she looks appropriate today? I think that her outfit is cute. It's not too, too clingy. Now, I don't think she's got on too much makeup. I think she's dressed appropriately. Yeah. I think she looks nice, but that's not my call, that's exactly. yours. She looks beautiful. But I mean, if she came downstairs dressed like that, ready for <clears> school, <throat> I'd say, have a nice day, sweetie, bye. I mean, I wouldn't even think twice. It would twice. be fine. There wouldn't be the arguments that we have every single day. I know, but I have come day. downstairs before with my makeup light like that. But and then maybe you have a tummy Take shirt off. on. <laughs> Okay, but no, seriously, you, but you have to understand, it's their right to we, make that and judgment, are, and so you want to negotiate. They're not asking you to become Amish. No, of course no. not. We are letting her. We feel that a, a small amount of makeup, a reasonable amount, is okay. But point. when you abuse it and you put it on extremely heavy, you need to respect me as your mom when I say, okay, lighten it up a little bit. You need to say, oh, okay, mom, and go upstairs and do it. You don't need to be snapping your fingers and giving me attitude and saying, it. I hate school anyway. Okay, and, but here's the thing. When you choose the behavior, you choose the consequences that come with that behavior. So if you choose to throw a tantrum about your makeup, then you sacrifice the right to use makeup. But if she doesn't follow your direction, then you need to take it away. And if she throws a tantrum, she'll get over it. Right. But you don't have a right to make up in fashion. Mm -hmm. That is a privilege that you're afforded. But you need to be willing to take a stand and stick to it. Now, I want to add to the conversation here. There's a 10-year-old girl that wants to get plastic surgery. Uh, she wants to look more like Miley Cyrus. Oh. Hey, she's 10. I mean, it's, you know, I understand. But we need to talk about what to do when that request is made. We'll be right back. I want to have a lot of plastic surgery to look like Miley Cyrus. It's okay for a kid my age to have Botox and Juvederm. She tells me she wants to be pretty, like everybody on TV. Your appearance is everything. I want to get my freckles zapped off because Miley doesn't have any freckles. I'm willing to go through pain to get my freckles zapped off. Taylor is just 10 years old, and she already wants to get Juvederm and Botox. Now, I kid you not. Now, Mom Christina says it's natural to want to be pretty, but Dad Gus, he doesn't want anyone touching his little girl's face. I absolutely spoil Taylor. She got her first Louis Vuitton when she was two. Taylor wears the best clothes, best shoes, best jewelry. Your appearance is everything. Uh, when I ask Taylor about wanting Botox, she tells me she wants to be pretty, like everybody on TV. Taylor loves Miley Cyrus, Kim Kardashian, Selena Gomez. She's loved Miley Cyrus since she was probably four or five. A lot of my friends tell me I look like Miley except for my freckles. I cut my hair and I darkened it. I want to have a lot of plastic surgery to look like Miley Cyrus. It's okay for a kid my age to have Botox and Juvederm. What I think about Christina having her plastic surgeries is that she has the age to be able to do the kind of thing. Taylor, she's just way too young. She's a kid, and I want to keep her as a kid. I don't want her to grow up that fast. I would get Juvederm to make my lips more plump and Botox from wrinkles. I noticed that Miley doesn't have any wrinkles on her face, and I don't want to get any either. What I think about her wanting to look like Miley Cyrus is I tell her that she needs to be her own unique person. She needs to just be herself. I don't like my freckles. At 13 or 14, I would allow Taylor to have the freckles removed if that's what she chose to do. I'm willing to go through pain to get my freckles zapped off. The reason why Taylor wants to remove her freckles, she wants to be just like her mother. Basically, monkey see, monkey do. Every day before I go to school, I put on my powder and I put on my lip gloss. I don't mind makeup. I just don't like her to look like a clown. She knows what daddy likes her to wear. The one thing that will make you happy is looking like Miley. OK, do you two disagree on something here? I believe that, you know, little girls want to be pretty. They want the things that they want in life. And, you know, I think if you are going to a job interview, you have three women. You have they're exactly the same criteria as far as degree. And you have one that's so, so pretty. You have one that's very pretty. And you have one that's, 
you know, mediocre, which one's going to get the job? I, I know what you're saying. You think pretty girls get the job. They do. But listen, I'm concerned about this. Are you actually considering doing teenage procedures? Like getting rid of freckles or having Botox? Taylor has no, no wrinkles on her face. She has no, you know, her lips don't need to be plump. But I mean, minor things, if she wanted to get some hair removal or possibly getting some freckles removed, I wouldn't have a problem with that in a few years. Really, you would remove freckles from that child? If that's what she chose, she wanted to do, yes. Okay, you said that you would let Taylor get Botox in a couple of years. I'm not saying that I would or I wouldn't, but, you know, it's a possibility. I'm open-minded to a lot of things, you know? Why is a 10-year-old asking about Botox? How is that in her vocabulary? You know, um, I definitely do visit the plastic surgeon, um, and she does go to the plastic surgeon office with, with me, and you do have some beautiful women in there that do work for his office, and they, while I'm getting my procedure done or whatever, they may be in there, you know, giving her a microderm abrasion, giving her a facial or, you know. Do you have a question for me? What age do you think it is appropriate for a, child, a, a person to have plastic surgery or any type of procedure done? It ain't yeah. 10. Exactly. And it's not, and I didn't it's say not it was teenage. Mm -hmm. It's not 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. I think that it boils down to people doing it for either the right reason or the wrong reason. You know, but you have yeah. to look at little girls, you yeah. know, and what they want, and, and, and they want to be aspiring. And what is wrong with aspiring to be like someone that's going to be a oh, celebrity? Oh, there's lots wrong with it. Why? Because what, what's wrong with wanting to be Taylor? What's wrong with wanting exactly. to be the best Taylor exactly. that you can be? What's wrong with taking pride? <laughs> what, what's wrong with fostering in her being Every proud of who she is? Every person has to have someone to look up to. And you know what? If she wants to go out and look up to someone like Molly Cyrus, then go for it. The, the girl doesn't do drugs. She's, you know, she's a singer. She makes a lot of money. She's a teenager. <coughs> I mean, what's wrong with looking up to that? As a 10-year-old girl, you're very impressionable. Mm -hmm. And these girls that she's wanting to look like, they don't look like that. Mm -hmm. I, I know Miley Cyrus. I know Kim Kardashian. Mm -hmm. They don't look like that. That's all smoke and mirrors and lighting and makeup and shadowing and lenses and photoshopping when you see these girls on billboards and in magazines. They, they, you know, th that's not reality. And so if you're trying to emulate a fantasy, then you're never going to measure up. Now, Dr. Franklin Rose has been Christina's plastic surgeon for about 15 years, and he refuses to perform any procedures on Taylor. Correct, Dr. Rose? Thanks for being here again. It's good to see you. Well, thank, thank you, Dr. Craft. Uh, you, you wouldn't perform a procedure on a, a child in this, t in this context. I have cautioned uh, Christina and Taylor that we need to wait uh, several years, many years really, before undertaking uh, any procedures uh, of this nature. If you do procedures on a, on a child that is still growing and developing, there are dangers involved in that, correct? Oh, oh definitely, Dr. Phil. Uh, the skin is very tender. It's very... A th a thin, different uh, substance uh, than as she grows. So certainly things like laser hair removal or, or laser skin uh, retexturing, you would have to wait maybe six, seven, eight years, something like that. Yeah, many, many years right. before something like this is done. Now, Christina says that she thinks looks are about 80% of how this country is run. So she wants her daughter to have the best edge that she can get. So we're going to actually meet Taylor when we come back. I'm here with uh, Christina and her 10-year-old daughter, Taylor. And Taylor says getting Juvederm to look more like Miley Cyrus will make her happy. Now, her mom, Christina, says that she will allow her daughter to do this, but not for a few years. And you like Miley Cyrus? Yes. Yeah, you've been watching her how long? Since I was, like, seven or eight. Uh-huh. Well, she is really a, a sweet girl. I know her, and uh, I've been on her show, as a matter of fact. Why do you want to look like her? I just think looking like her will make me happy. And I think that if I look like her, I'll, people will recognize me as looking like Miley. Yeah. But don't, wouldn't you rather look like Taylor? Yes. Yeah, well, your mom told you to say yes. She does. I mean, she wants to look like herself. I mean, she just wants to be the best that she can be. And, you know, she just looks up to, you know, other girls and... Well, uh, do you think you would look better if you look like Miley? Yes. 
What would you do to look more like Miley? What would, what would make you look more like her? Botox and Juvederm. Juvederm would do what to your lips? And make my lips more plump. You said you would be happier. How would that make you happier? Because if people recognize me like Miley and make me happy. Well, tell them what you want to do. You would like to be a singer, and you would like to be, you know, you would want to be on TV. Wouldn't you rather become successful as a singer and do the things you want to do as Taylor, and then little girls would say, I want to look like Taylor? Well, yes, but I think looking like Miley Cyrus would help me get there. Really? Because, see, I, I live in Hollywood, and I can tell you that's not right. Because then people would say, you're a Miley Cyrus knockoff. You're a Miley Cyrus lookalike. And you would do much better if you decided, you know what, I'm Taylor, and I'm going to be Taylor, and I'm going to look like me, and be like me, and sound like me, and sing like me. And you're going to have a much better chance of success being the best tailor you can be than trying to look like somebody else because somebody would say, who's she? Oh, she's that girl that looks like Miley Cyrus. But nobody would take you seriously. You, you got to be yourself. You got to be your own person. And your lips are plenty plump. <laughs> I mean... I guess the bottom line is I'm just trying to give her the tools in life that she needs to whatever she needs in life that, that I'm there to provide it to her. Obviously, little girls don't make money. Um, it's not something I'm going to run out and do tomorrow. But, I mean, you know, later down the line, if this is something that she chose to do, you know, knowing Dr. Rose, this would be somebody that, you know, I would send her to if need to be in the future. Yeah, boy, I just... I, I, would, I would quarrel with you about this till the end of the earth because I think that the most empowering thing you could do is for her to value everything that is uniquely and naturally her. And the last thing in the world I would be thinking about is introducing her to Dr. Rose to, to consider having anything done. And th this is as fine a plastic surgeon as you can find. Uh, but th this is the last place I would take this beautiful young girl. And I worry about the message it sends if you even entertain enhancing, changing, because it sends a message that you're not, you're going to be the, the third girl in the interview. You, you have to change yourself to be competitive. And I just absolutely think that it's not true. You could not have oh, a beautiful. more beautiful absolutely young girl. Beautiful. And because you've taken that route, mm -hmm. I worry that you project that onto her and say, I did it, I want you to do it. Oh, no, 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 that's, that's not the case. I mean, it's something I do. She's known Dr. Rose since she was very little, um, and she's gone up there. She knows all the girls in his office, and this is just something, you know, when you go in, you see the pretty girls, they're in there doing stuff. It's, you know, it's the same concept. All right, coming up, we're going to find out why my next mom, who has opinions of this mom, uh, says she has created a 10-year-old monster. We'll be right back. I get a manicure and a pedicure once a week. I get my hair done. I tell them to crinkle it, curl it, or just give it like a flip. You get your eyebrows waxed. How old are you again? 10 and 10. The monthly cost for Diamond Salon visits is $600 a month. Diamond doesn't like the word no. She will cry, she will pout. Tiffany says her daughter Diamond is a total diva whose weekly spa treatments have become a must. I get a manicure and a pedicure once a week. Hi, Hello. welcome to Le Chic Spa. You must be Miss Tiffany. Yes, I am. And you must be Diamond. I'm gonna have a full diva day. I really like the diva treatment. That one. Perfect. I get my hair done. First, I get it washed, I get it blow dry. I either tell them to crinkle it, straight iron it, curl it, or just give it like a flip. She gets her facials. I see you're getting a regular basic facial or a chocolate fondue facial, right? Okay. She also gets her eyebrows waxed. You get your eyebrows waxed. Yeah. How old are you again? 10 and 10. The monthly cost for Diamond Salon visits is $600 a month. My birthday party is going to be humongous. I'm going to have a Hummer limo. I'm going to have, like, the club theme party. I'm going to have the VIP passes, the red carpet. 
Diamond wants an iPad because it's the newest thing. I don't want to say no to her. I don't want to spend the money <laughs> to buy it for her, but I want her to have one for her birthday. Diamond doesn't like the word no. She will cry, she will pout, she will have her little temper tantrum. She has like a two-year-old. Diamond wants more than I can really afford to give her. Do you enjoy having all this stuff yes, done? Yes, I really do. Uh-huh. Is it expensive? Yes. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Does it matter to you if, if your mom can afford it or not? No. Does that not tell you everything you need to know? She says, I don't care I, whether she can afford it or not, I just want it. There's nothing that can be changed about her. I have tried. I, you know, I say no, and I'm hearing, Mommy, please, Mommy, please, Mommy, please, Mommy, please, all day. Didn't you say that there are times that you actually don't pay the electric bill? I will because put it to the side. Her father is the only one that works. Okay, it's just that whatever she is needs a to do. higher form of insanity. I'm telling you, I, listen, I want to give you a wake up call here. You say you've got 30, 40 grand in credit card debt? Yes. And you are actually to, yeah. running your family bankrupt because you don't want to tell a 10 year old that she can't have a spa experience? But I started it. I started then it. You it's... End it. I'm going to tell you something that your mother won't apparently tell you, and that is that. This family has, you know, lots of needs and, and they just can't afford for you to go do this all the time. And you say you don't care about that, but you really do, right? I mean, you, you don't want your family to not have the money they need to, to be okay, right? I do want them to be okay, but I really, I can't spend like one day without going to a spa. Your job as a mother is not to give her everything that she wants. I don't Your give her job, everything that she wants. Well, you, look, don't split hairs with me. You know what I mean. You don't have $1,500 to spend on a party. You should not do it. Absolutely, unequivocally, you should not do it. You should not take this child back to the spa. Not one time, not one time. Your family is in debt. You can't afford it. Your job as a mother is to prepare her for life. Our job is to prepare our children to survive in this world when we're not there. And you're not doing that. Oh, I do that. She you're... knows I'm, I'm, I am a phenomenal mother, and I know that. I just want my daughter to have what she needs to become what she wants to be. She doesn't need to go to the spa to become what she wants to be. No. Under no theory whatsoever does a 10-year-old need a spa treatment. Well, I have raised children. I've even been 10. <laughs> And I did not have a spa treatment, and here I am. But a uh, spa, what, what's the big deal about a spa treatment? You can't afford it. You will create an entitled child here that will not succeed in the world because what's going to happen when she's on her own and can't afford to do all of this stuff? You need to, to tell her no. Tell me again what your question was for me. Am I a bad mother for doing what I'm doing? No, no. I absolutely, unequivocally, do not think you are a bad mother. I think you are a loving mother that wants the best for your children. I think you have a bad guidance system. But I think you doing what you're doing is financially irresponsible for the family. I think it's preparatorily irresponsible for your child. It's not helping, it's hurting. And I think you need to stop doing that, in my opinion. We'll be right back. Well, I want to thank all of my guests today, and a special thanks to Dr. Franklin Rose. And if you are someone that wants to get something done, I'm telling you, that's the guy. Thank you, Dr. Uh, he's got the hands, he's got the staff, he's got the techniques. You, you do a great job, and I love the fact that you are so responsible in telling people the truth instead of what they want to hear. And I've heard that from so many people that have been to you, and I, well, I, that's th so great. Thank you, Dr. Phil. That's a I really appreciate it. Thank you. Anything you want to add? Oh, and I'm just, you know, I don't want anybody to think that I'm running out to get my daughter plastic surgery. It was, you know, I just, that, that's all I want to say. It's not something I want to run out and do tomorrow. It's yeah. just in the future, if that's something that she wants to do, then I'm, I will be open to it. And, and you know my view about that is I think, you, I think our job is to teach children to value who they are. And that's, yes. Instead of trying to be something else. I just think that's so important. If you have an out-of-control tween at home, you can go to drphil.com and let us know what your tween is doing. Thanks for being here. So long. Good to see you, man. Everything going well? Yeah. All right, good. Good to see you. Here you go, brother.